Okay, I'm going to do a quick video. I have already reloaded a bunch of my tests for my hunting rounds. I'll show you here real quick. For instance, these right here. That's 44.2 grains of my 100V hybrid powder. Uh, the, and this next one up here is 43.2. Um, and then this is max, this is 45 grains. Down here I have 41 grains of the 100V, the hybrid powder. And then these are, there's 44.5 grains of my uh, IMR4350 powder. And then the next one's up here. These right here are the 40, these are 45 grains of the IMR powder. I found that my gun does not like the max loads that Hornady has. Um, <clears throat> so I, I get some pressure signs, a little bit of flattened primers. So I stopped doing max loads and I'm doing a grain below the max loads roughly. Except for the new powder that I just got which is, um, let me show you. I just picked up the Hog, Hogden one, Hybrid 100V powder. So I'm trying that and I'm going to try two max loads with that one. That's these two right in the middle there. Um, so we'll see how those do with the max loads there just to see. But the other ones are, are um, that's 0.8 grains less. These ones right next to it. 0.8 grains less than max load. These are 1.8 grains. Uh, 1.8 grains less than max load. So I'm trying to kind of go in the middle there with those. I'm, I want to get the fastest performance I can get out of them, but I want it to be safe as well. I already know on these using the 4350 powder that the max load is too much. It's a little too much pressure. Um, all of them's compressed load with this 4350 just because it's such big grains with that powder. In my case, this is I I failed to mention that of course it's in the title. I shoot with the 7 millimeter 08, but uh, 45.5 grains. The IMR 4350 powder at 45.5 grains. These are showing a little bit of pressure issues, um, and so I dropped to 45 grain. But I was getting good speeds. I was getting 40, uh, 2,700 feet per second. I had one crazy flyer that was 2,783 feet per second, according to my chronograph. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, almost 2,800 feet per second. These are 162 grain bullets. So that's pretty fast for us. 7 mm 8 um, for that size of bullet. But I expect these to be around 2650. Uh, 2650 to 2675 with the 45 grains. These down here with the uh, um, 44.5 grains will probably be 26 to 2650 in that range. And I am not sure what these are. 100V hybrid powder I haven't used before. But the load data says they'll be right around on the max load it said 2670 roughly um, or 2650 in that range uh, I expect these will probably be about 2600 and these may be just under 2600 and then my two max loads that I'll test just to see how they perform with this powder but uh, anyway so that's my hunting loads I am currently reloading right now 20, uh, 20 of my 139 grain. These are just soft point boat tail bullets that I'm doing. So 139 grain uh, boat tail soft points. Um, as you can see, I got a bunch right here. So that's it right there. Nothing too fancy. Uh, just for shooting, uh, plinking, and maybe for some rabbits or coyotes. I figure those would be pretty good, but I'm loading those using the load data. I'm actually just going off of the minimum load data here. I'm using my IMR8208 XBR powder and 39 grains, so they'll be 26 and a half. Um, I tend to get a little bit higher with my gun. I shoot with the Weatherby Vanguard Series 2 with a 24 inch barrel. These are tested with a 24 inch barrel, but I, I get a little bit faster than these according to my chronograph. So. I, and my chronograph's out about 10 feet, so I'm getting like 50 FPS faster than what the load data says. 
So these should be traveling right around 2,700 feet per second, which is more than enough for coyotes and rabbits and target shooting. I could go higher, but I mean, it's only two and a half grains higher and it bumps it up 140 feet per second, but I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm going to save some powder here and just get some loads that I can handle well uh, that are just fun to shoot, low recoil. So anyway, I'll show you my process here. Uh, I am using the Lee turret press. I love this press. It works awesome with these uh, rifle rounds as well as uh, any pistol rounds. I reloaded 300 rounds of 9mm last week in about an hour. Um, works really well. Plenty good for me. I've already done a few of these you can see right here. Uh, just done uh, 7 or so. I'm doing uh, 28 or 2.8 inches max overall length for these um, 39 grains of powder and uh, so far it's it's going smoothly so I will set the camera up you can watch me reload for just a second while I'm doing this so one thing I will say is just real quick that I'm using the drum me uh, powder measure the Lee drum powder measure on my press it works really well it's uh, accurate it's fairly similar in design to the Lee perfect powder measure uh, that I got right there it works really well and I love that I can do it on the press which you'll see right now as part of my workflow so let me show you a couple of rounds here real quick this is brand new brass Pick it up from Cabela's in Lehigh, Utah. 100 pieces for $40 for 7mm08, which is pretty awesome. I'll go ahead and prime it. Let's get going. I already have everything set up. So it's pretty smooth just getting these through. I am putting a little crimp on these. I didn't put any on my hunting loads. Um, but uh, just because I'm testing the powders first, I'll mess with the crimps later. Um, that way I don't have to worry about uh, the crimp messing up my first tests and getting the loads that I want. Once I find the loads and the accuracy that I want, I'll go ahead and start uh, fine tuning them with crimp and, and bullet length a little bit more. Um, they are seated pretty close to the max bolt length for my gun on those hunting rounds. These are not. These are just 2.8 inches. My max hunting rounds are 2.92 which is uh, about five thousandths off the lands for my rifle barrel and I get some pretty good accuracy with those so I'm pretty happy with those so far uh, just trying to find the right powder and then I'll, I'll mess with the length a little bit more probably and the uh, crimp once I get that figured out. So as you can see you can go through these pretty quick and this is even with doing crimp so that's one extra step in there. Um, so if you have any questions go ahead and comment below. Um, I've tried several different powders. I had a 30-06. I still have it, but I got rid of all my reloading stuff. I'm getting rid of the 30-06. Never real happy with the guns that I own, and it kind of put a bitter taste in my mouth, I guess, for the 30-06. Uh, great caliber, very versatile, um, but uh, beyond 500 yards, it, this I, the 7mm OA actually does better ballistically. Uh, and it has half the recoil of the 30 out 6 which is saying something because the 30 out 6 doesn't kick that much. Um, but I find the 7mm08 much more enjoyable, more accurate, um, flatter shooting. Uh, and then with the problems I had with my Remingtons with the 30 out 6, it just kind of put a sour taste in my mouth. So I decided to move away completely, got my weather bee and uh, I've been pretty happy so far. It's taken a, a pretty good beating with some of my 
max loads and experimenting and realizing that I couldn't go to the max load uh, and it's still going good and uh, my Remington did not fare so well in any of my max loads um, it has a little ejector on it and uh, the case holder that broke twice and I had to send it into Remington um, and it this was one of the and it was shooting factory ammo the first time it broke I wasn't even shooting any reloads and it just broke and wouldn't eject my rounds anymore so I had a case stuck in the barrel and then uh, and then uh, couldn't get the get it out until I got home so I ruined that shooting for the rest of the day pretty frustrated with that and then it happened again the second time um, when I was shooting some reloads testing them and uh, they weren't max power then I learned with my first 30 S6 it couldn't take it but I wasn't gonna even try with this one to see if they could do it because it broke so many times well it broke once already so I didn't trust it and then it broke again a month later so it was gone for two weeks the Remington broke again two weeks after I got it back and sent it back in it was gone for two weeks and I just got it back and I decided to switch everything go with my 7 and my 8 and uh, been pretty happy with the move so far now I've already double checked my bullets my weights and everything so that's why I'm just cruising through these so but anyway there's 12 that I did while you guys were watching um, pretty fast works pretty well I am pretty happy with the press and I really love shooting this little this 7mm08 um, I'm gonna be elk hunting which is why I'm doing the 162 grain bullets in here this year um, comparing the energies to my 30-06 that I had I'm actually the bullet that I purchased the 150 grain SSTs for my 30-06 that I was going to shoot elk with these outperform the, those by quite a bit these are at 500 yards these are these have 150 more pound, foot pounds of energy um, not that I'll be hunting out that far but you know 300 yards is still more power than those and that's at like 2700 feet 2650 feet per second so pretty happy with my switch to 7 mm 8 and uh, I love the little bit shorter cases and uh, so works out pretty well 7 the uh, 30 out 6 is a great round great caliber I just had some bad experiences with the guns that I had put a bad taste in my mouth uh, I got into the 30-06 because my brother found a Remington 710 which is a really cheap model Remington that they only made for about eight years he found one for 150 bucks and so I bought it from him got some reloading stuff and I almost felt obligated to stick with 30-06 because I got the gun for my brother and because I had all the reloading stuff but I decided I'm gonna buy a better gun I switched to the Remington 783 30 out 6 very accurate I got so half inch in my ways I got one five shot group was almost the size of a dime very accurate um, but then it broke <laughs> while I was shooting those and uh, sent it in a month later it breaks again can't eject the round so frustrating uh, and I had been researching the 7mm08 for quite a while. I was either going to get the 7 mag uh, or the 7mm08. And then I decided for shooting and competitions and everything, I thought the 7mm08 would be more reasonable as far as kick and cost for reloading and everything. And so I did ultimately decided to switch to that and get rid of my uh, 30-06. So I still have my 30-06, sold everything else. But... Uh, it's only a matter of time before I 30 out 6 cells. But anyway, there's a quick video reloading some 7mm08 bullets and a little bit of the reason why I switched off my 30 out 6 to 7mm08. Um, ballistically, if you go look at the ballistics, they're fairly close. The 7mm08 uh, doesn't support, I mean, 162 grain. I think the biggest bullet that I found reloading data for is 175 grain which is a big bullet and I can push that 2500 feet per second which is more than enough for basically any animal I will I will shoot um, in North America these 162 grain e Hornady ELDX bullets are plenty big for elk and other things that I'll shoot and I'm planning on sticking with these for my hunting load they perform very well I'm just fine-tuning it now 
but the the it does fall short when you get into the bigger bullets. The 30 out six, you can pick up the 200 grain and 212 grain ELDX bullets, and those perform superbly. The ballistic coefficient is is very good. Um, these ELDX bullets in the 7 mm, the 162 grain, they have a ballistic coefficient of it's uh, 100 or, or 630, as you can see there in the box. Maybe let's see. I don't know if you can read that or not. Let me see if I can get a little closer for you. So yeah, uh, 630 ballistic coefficient on uh, this these rounds right here. The uh, 30 out 6, 200 grains have about 625, I think, 626 ballistic coefficient. And then you can pick up the 212 grain, which is insanely high at 675, 676 ballistic coefficient. Or maybe it's 673, but either way, that's insanely high. But they do drop. That's getting to be a pretty heavy bullet, and that will beat up your shoulder uh, when you shoot that 212 grain bullet out of 30 out 6. And I'd probably load it hot, too because <laughs> that's that's what I do and it would just beat me up so I'm pretty happy with this these 139 grains don't kick hardly at all that I just reloaded today and these guys kick less than my 150 165 grains did out of my 30 out 6 and these have a, a more punch to them so fairly happy so far if you have any questions comments below please subscribe for more videos on reloading and the miscellaneous do-it-yourself projects I do if you want to see anything that I've done or uh, have any questions, go ahead and comment below. Thanks.